Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this short game to the comp video, we have several pieces of news which have popped up going into CES 2017. The first is the GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti for laptops. It's going to be a quickie. And then we're going to focus on the RX 560M, which is the mobility chip from Radeon, which does appear to be some confirmation there will be an RX 500 series. We'll go into that in just a moment. And then we're going to focus the bulk of this video on yet more reports of performance from both Ryzen and AMD's Vega lineup of chips. As of the time I'm recording this, Vega's debut in terms of live stream will happen in about 22-ish hours. And therefore, I'm going to make the topics a little shorter than normal simply because I'm sure a lot of this information could possibly be either out of date or there'll be a hell of a lot more of it in about a day. But since this has popped up, and um, I figure it's a good place for us to start. So let's begin. Starting things out with the GTX 1050 slash 1050 tie. And it is, of course, Pascal for laptops. There are a slew of these devices coming out, including from MSI, Alienware, Dell, HP, and so on and so on. And the cards will have either two or four gigabytes of memory. From what I can understand, it looks like the 1050 Ti will have the four gigabyte, while the GTX 1050 will have just two. In terms of performance and specifications, it's pretty much on par with what you'd expect. and basically decimates the previous architecture, in other words, a Maxwell, and has a bundle of goodies, including 640 or 768 CUDA cores, 1,354 or 1,493 base clock. This is obviously with the 1050 or the TIE. Uh, memory clock is 7 gigabytes per set. 7,000 megahertz, excuse me. Uh, bus width, 128 bit, and memory bandwidth is uh, up to 112 gigabytes per second. Overall, it's looking to be a nice card. Obviously, if you are primarily going to be focusing on PC gaming, then if you can afford it, the 1050 Ti looks the better buy. And that was a quickie. As I said, it's not the focus of the video. However, I do want to touch on the RX 560M. Now, I'm going to make the assumption that this is probably not supposed to have been announced yet. Uh, it was a probably supposed to happen later on after CES 2017. That's an assumption. A couple of people actually messaged me about this. The first one being Yelaz via email, so kudos to him. So this leak actually popped up from Lenovo's Y520. Now there's not a whole heap of information other than the fact that it does say the AMD RX 560M. Now this brings us to multiple questions but it is rather interesting because the Radeon RX um, account has said multiple times that a new architecture is coming. Now we can always make guesses as to what this is going to be but the most logical thing is the RX 560M is going to be the Polaris 12 chip or possibly a rebrand of some such of the older generation of the Radeon graphics cards. It's also possible it could be a halfway house. For example, it could be, say, the 470, but with fewer stream processors enabled. It is quite interesting, however, the primary reason I'm reporting on this is not actually the specifications or what the card could be, more that it's the 500 series. One could make a compelling argument that numbers don't necessarily mean much between desktop and laptop, but I would actually disagree Generally, there has to be some continuity there, simply because otherwise it looks just a very, very confusing. And for them to have the 500 series for the uh, desktop, for the laptops and mobile, yet have 400 for for the uh, for the desktop, it would just be really weird. The other possibility, of course, is the person who created the advert simply went oops and made a typo. As of the time I'm recording this, it's actually been corrected, or what I say corrected, it's been scrubbed from the internet and have removed it from that particular thing. So there you go. Anywho, continuing on with our uh, trip through the stars, ha ha ha, ha ha ha, um, let's talk about Vega. So a couple of benchmarks have popped up, well I say benchmarks, a couple of videos which show the performance of Star Wars Battlefront. Now you might recall one of my original complaints with the New Horizon event was that 
there was no real indication of how well Star Wars Battlefront ran on 4K. Now, Lisa Sue did tell us all the settings were at max and it was running at 60 FPS, but that doesn't mean that much, to be honest. It's like, you know, I'd prefer to see a frame rate counter. Now, admittedly, I suppose that could be faked, but even so. Um, the other problem with it is it, it, I didn't really like the scenes that they were selecting. You might recall that was one of my original complaints. Well, wait no longer. There's a couple of videos and a couple of images which have popped up from Think Computers as well as for gamers. Now, these images show the uh, graphical settings of the Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, including field of view, which is actually kind of low at just 55, if I'm totally honest with you. But regardless of all of that, the frame rate is very impressive. From what has been said from people who have been viewing it at CES, the frame rate typically was at 60 FPS locked, but did occasionally dip down a titchy bit. Now, I don't know the state of the drivers for this. I'm going to make the assumption that the drivers, since it's been a couple of weeks now since New Horizon, the drivers have probably improved some. They're probably not final revision drivers. Goodness knows what the state of the silicone is. And, of course, that means, like, what are the clock speeds? And the final thing is because it is frame rate capped at 60, for all we know, in some situations it was going to, like, 75 or 80. This means that... Basically, the card is pretty much on levels of the Titan X, which is very impressive. I say basically because, obviously, with the benchmarks we have for Titan X with Star Wars Battlefront, it's hitting like 61 to 67, and we don't know how much above 60 the Vega graphics card, which is being shown, is getting. And, of course, that also leads us to the next logical question, the pricing which we also don't know. I would go into a whole bunch more stuff on this, but quite frankly, I think a lot of this information is going to be null and void. Don't you just love that term, null and void? There's not much ambiguity. It's like, I don't know, cease and desist. There's no real... You can't really question what they mean if you get a cease and desist. You must cease and desist all of your frivolities, good sir. Anywho, I, I don't know what got me onto that. Another one that's popped up, and I did want to talk about this just for a second, is MSI's AM4 platform. MSI have been pretty steadfast in the support of AMD in the past, and of course that means that they've produced various uh, motherboards for their bulldozer and other platforms on AM3 or what have you, and this is not going to be changing anytime soon for AM4. So OCholic, OCAholic, excuse me, .co.uk, have posted a whole bunch of images for the AM4 motherboard platform. One can see that the board itself looks rather spartan. It is pretty... actually sparse is the word I was looking for there, that makes more sense. There's the B350, which looks rather beautiful, actually. It looks... It looks like a high-quality premium board, quite frankly. Now... The reason behind, of course, the buffer board looking so bare in comparison to some boards, especially of the past, is just because so much stuff now is located on chip. Plus, as well, with the AM4 platform, more specifically in this case, Ryzen, it's only a dual-core memory controller, which it operates with. And this is counter to, let's say, the X99 platform from Intel, which sports a quad-channel memory controller. Regardless, it looks kind of pretty. One can spot the usual assortment of you know, various slots and expansion modules. Three PCIe Generation 3 slots, and two of them are steel reinforced. So I'm going to assume that you're going to be able to put in quite a lot of weight on those cards. Um, you've also got, of course, normal size PCIe. Um, oh, sorry, between the first and second size PCIe slot, there's also a decent graphics card distance, uh, distance for the graphics cards. You've got two M.2 slots, however there is no MSI M.2 shield, which is kind of weird. But um, And finally you've got six SATA ports, a U.2 port, and finally an external USB 3.1. Which, I guess, I don't particularly understand the purpose of a USB uh, internal USB. I mean, yeah, they can be kind of nice if you're doing a lot of internal work in the system, but eh, it's not really for me personally. And, uh, yeah, so it's going to be very interesting over the next 
next uh, couple of days, I imagine, with CES, I have a feeling that this CES 2017 is probably going to be one of the more eventful in history. So I, I actually think this year in tech, at least, is going to be really cool. Anyway, uh, I don't know why I lost the ability to speak in the latter quarter of this video, but hopefully you can forgive it. I shall see you all soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.